On July 14, 2025, Bitcoin broke $123,000. Within 72 hours, the RTX 4090 street price jumped by $350. But what if I told you that price hike had little to do with mining? Because the real reason why your GPU costs $1,949 is already baked into the chip before it even leaves the factory. Let's rewind. One wafer, one chip design. But depending on factory testing, that chip might become a 4080, a 4090, or a $4,000 workstation GPU. That sorting? It's called binning. Here's the thing most people don't know. Many chips that could run as flagship products get intentionally labeled as budget models. Same silicon, different software configuration, different price tag. But here's the kicker. Even if your chip passes the 4090 tests, it might still ship as a 4080. Why? Because the difference isn't hardware, it's software locks. Think of it like buying a sports car that's software capped at 120 kilometers an hour, even though the engine can do 250. The RTX 4090 silicon can handle 600 watts, but firmware limits it to 450. When hardware modders unlock these limits, they often see 35% better performance. Same chip, same cooling, just different software permissions. The hardware was always capable, it just wasn't allowed. Gamers call it silicon lottery. Manufacturers call it market segmentation. You might pay $400 more for the privilege of not getting a factory limited chip. The manufacturing cost difference between an RTX 4080 and 4090? About $50. The price difference? $400. You're not paying for better silicon. You're paying for permission to use more of what was already there. This strategy serves multiple markets efficiently. Budget gamers get modern architecture at lower prices, while enthusiasts pay premium for unlocked performance but most consumers don't realize they're buying artificial limitations. Survey data shows 89% of GPU buyers don't know their card could theoretically perform better. The real silicon lottery isn't about chip quality. It's about which performance tier you're allowed to access. Now enter Bitcoin. When prices surge, it's easy to blame miners. And yes, they create demand spikes. But they're not the ones creating artificial product gaps. That's done by firmware, binning, and supply chain design long before crypto gets involved. Mining accounts for 15-20% of GPU demand according to NVIDIA's reports. The other 80%? Gaming, AI, professional work. But when Bitcoin hits $123,000, suddenly every GPU shortage gets blamed on miners. Here's the thing. Large mining operations often buy professional cards anyway. They want unrestricted performance and don't mind paying $6,800 instead of $1,600. The shortage affecting gamers? That's mostly about artificial product segmentation, not crypto demand. Bitcoin surges reveal the system. They don't create it. When demand spikes, companies could theoretically unlock more performance from existing inventory but that would disrupt their entire pricing model. The shortage isn't just about supply, it's about strategy. To most people, a GPU just means better graphics, smoother videos, faster games. But that's only part of the story. A GPU, graphics processing unit, is like a brain with thousands of tiny hands. While your CPU handles one task at a time, your GPU processes thousands in parallel. Whether it's drawing pixels on your screen, rendering 3D objects, or powering AI training, that parallel power is what makes GPUs essential today. From your YouTube feed to Google Translate, chances are a GPU touched it. And yet, despite this power, your GPU's true capabilities are often locked behind firmware, segmentation, and branding. Not because they can't perform, but because they weren't allowed to. Here's what to remember next time you shop. Check binning, research BIOS limits, and always ask, am I paying for performance or for permission?
Sometimes a previous generation flagship offers better value than current mid-range with more restrictions. For the technically inclined, modification communities exist, but understand the risks. You'll void your warranty and there's always potential for hardware damage. For most people, buying the right card initially makes more sense. The key is being an informed consumer. When you see marketing claims about advanced architecture, remember that the silicon capabilities might be much higher than what that specific product delivers. You're buying the level of performance the company decided to unlock. Your GPU didn't just go through a factory, it went through a pricing department. And while engineering built the performance, marketing decided what you could actually use. And that's the real silicon lottery, the one you never get to play. Understanding this system won't lower GPU prices, but it will help you make better decisions when Bitcoin hits $200,000 and everyone's talking about the next shortage. Next week, why your smartphone battery dies faster every year, and it's not what Apple tells you.